animals living around us, right? In the land, in the water, as well as the soil. So these organisms we see with our eyes, but there are some organisms which we cannot see with our eyes. We can see them only under the microscopes. They are such small in size. And these organisms are known as microorganisms. So the definition of microorganism is an organism that is too small to be seen by the naked eye or unaided eye. So that is known as the microorganism. So what is the definition of microorganism? An organism that is too small to be seen by the naked eye or unaided eye. Such organism is known as microorganism. An example can be bacteria. Bacteria is usually a single cell organism. Next. What are the types of microorganisms? The classification of microorganisms. So broadly, they are divided into four groups. They are bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and algae. So these are the major four types of microorganisms. You might be wondering why aren't we talking about viruses? Generally, viruses are an exception because viruses become living organisms only when they enter the host. Otherwise, when they are outside, they are not living organisms. So there is a bit controversy about the viruses. Only when they enter any host organism, a plant or an animal or a human body, they start their life cycle. So viruses are an exception here because they reproduce only inside the host cell. They live inside the host cell only. So that is the reason virus is an exception. But viral diseases are there in the world. There are many, many viral diseases around us. You know the major ones are polio. Polio is caused by polio virus. Then fever, common cold, throat, throat infections. All these are caused by viruses only. And then chicken pox, which is also a very common disease. That is again caused by a type of virus only. So there are many viral diseases around us. But still, viruses do not come under the major group of classification of microorganisms because viruses are an exception. They become living organisms only when they enter the host cells. So there are four major types of microorganisms. So where do these microorganisms actually live? Where do they reside? So they can live in all types of environment. The body is so much adapted that they can survive any conditions, any surroundings like extreme ice cold climates where there is snow and then hot springs, even hot waters they survive and then desert areas where there is lot of heat and less water and marshy lands as well as the inside the body of the human beings. So they can survive in almost all the environments and sometimes they live freely. For example, amoeba. Amoeba is a unicellular organism. It can live freely. Whereas some microorganisms live in colonies, that means together as a groups. So examples of microorganisms which live in colonies are fungi and also algae. So this is how microorganisms live. Microorganisms and us. Let us see a relationship of human beings with microorganisms. So microorganisms play a major big role in our life. Microorganisms can also be of both harmful and useful as well as the disease causing. So microorganisms play a major role. They have many roles in our life. They can also be useful, they can be harmful and they can also be disease causing. So first let's see about the useful microorganisms. Also known as the friendly microorganisms. So in our day to day foods, what we consume, the useful microorganisms are responsible for preparation of curd, bread, cakes, pastries and degradation and decomposition of environment. So what do, when I talk about degradation and decomposition of environment, what does it mean? So we throw a lot of garbage around us, right? Vegetable peels, animal wastes, dry leaves, everything. So how does this mix up with the environment? The garbage which we throw and then the people who collect the garbage will put it in the landfills or the dumping yards. And after a few months, it decomposes and mixes up with the environment. How? With the help of useful bacteria or the useful microorganisms. They feed on these wastes, vegetable peels, fruit peels and all these 
organic waste, feed on it and make and make it into small small particles. The de decompose and degrade into small small particles. Then thereby it gets mixed up with the environment and the soil, and then it decomposes and degrades. So nothing but the organic waste is mixed up with the environment by decomposition and degradation process, breaking of it into small small particles with the help of useful microorganisms. So that is how friendly microorganisms help. So in the making of curd and bread, how do they help? So you know curd, right? Yogurt. Everybody consumes it every day in your life, right? So in day to day life, there are many uses of curd. So curd is prepared by an organism called lactobacillus. It helps in the promotion of formation of curd. So how? Suppose if you take warm milk and add a drop of curd to it and leave it overnight like that, this bacteria rapidly multiplies in the milk and thereby it settles the formation of curd. By rapid multiplication of lactobacillus bacteria, there will be formation of curd. So that is how it helps in the formation of curd and lactobacillus is a very useful bacteria. When it goes into the intestines, into the stomach, there also it acts as a friendly microorganism. Then in the preparation of cheese, pickles and all these things also bacteria helps. And then yeast, in the process of baking, in the baking industry, in the baking of bread, cakes, pastries, how do these actually get baked? Bake means nothing but suppose if you prepare a dough with the help of maida and then when you bake it, the dough increases in size and becomes bread or cake, right? How? When you add yeast mixed with water to the dough, whether it is a cake dough or a bread dough and leave it aside for some time, the dough will increase in size and when you bake it in the oven, it swells up and becomes bread or cake. So, yeast promotes the preparation of bread, pastries and cakes. Without yeast, we cannot prepare the bread and pastries. So, how do the yeast helps here? What is the role of yeast? Yeast rapidly reproduces, multiplies its content, its quantity multiplies and yeast reproduces rapidly and when it is reproducing rapidly, it is also doing the respiration process, right? And then carbon dioxide is evolved during the respiration. So the amount of carbon dioxide evolved during the respiration of yeast will go and settle as air bubbles in the dough. That is the reason the dough swells up. When you mix maida dough with yeast for bread baking or cake baking and when you add yeast to it, the yeast rapidly do respiration process and reproduction process. So in the process of respiration, they give out, they exhale carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide as small small air bubbles in the dough. These air bubbles do nothing but occupy the space in the dough and thereby the dough swells in size. So that is how they are known as the friendly microorganisms. Next let's see about the commercial use of microorganisms. In the commercial industrial purpose, market purpose, how do they help? The main thing they help is by fermentation process. The conversion of sugar into alcohol is nothing but fermentation. Sugar breaks down to form alcohol, then it is known as fermentation. So alcohol is produced by fermentation process, wine is produced by fermentation, acetic acid is produced by fermentation. You know apple cider vinegar, if you have ever heard about it, the apple cider vinegar is made up of fermented apples and it is very good for health, consumption of apple cider vinegar. So apple cider vinegar is made by the fermentation of apples. So that fermentation converts the sugars into alcohol with the help of yeast. Yeast acts here. So fermentation process is nothing but the conversion of sugars into alcohol. So fermentation is nothing but the conversion of sugar into alcohol. The production of any type of alcohol, wine as well as the acidic acid, all this includes fermentation process. This fermentation process is involved in yeast. Yeast is only responsible for fermentation always. So when we make idli batter in our house, when we make batter for chola bhatura, and when we make batter for dosas, if you observe, when we make the batter and leave it overnight, by the daytime the batter increases in size and swells up. 
This is also because of the presence of yeast. Yeast helps the batter to swell up by a process called fermentation. The process of conversion of sugar into alcohol is called fermentation. So all the production of alcohol, wine, acetic acid involves yeast and yeast is responsible for the fermentation process. So now we have understood that there is a lot of requirement of yeast in day to day market industry. So that is the reason where will be yeast grown, where, where will be the yeast sourced from. Yeast is grown on natural sugars present in grains. So yeast is grown on sugars. Fermentation is nothing but the conversion of sugars, right? So yeast is grown, grown on sugar. Sugars like grains like barley, wheat, rice, crushed fruit juice. So yeast is nothing but sugar, right? Sugar will be grown on grains. How is this related sugar grown on grains? Grains are nothing but the source of carbohydrates. For example, rice. Rice is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is the source of sugar. sugar. So that is how yeast is grown on the rice and as well as the crushed fruit juices. So this is about the commercial use of microorganisms.